ladies and gentlemen, I'd love you to give a virtual round of applause to Lisa Zmuda, uh, 10 Focus Steps to Relaunch You in 2020. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Thank you so much, Travis and Becky and Dustin for having me here today. I am Lisa Z. I spend eight hours a day, every day, helping people organize their lives. I'd like to say that it's just their businesses that I organize, but the truth is there are many components to a business and to organize a life is to get a life focused. So buckle up because there's gonna be a lot of content here today and a lot of words. So don't feel like you need to write anything down. We will provide this PowerPoint to you and I will also be providing all of my talking points on each subject, on each step. So how do I know about this? How do I know about focus? Well, I've spent 10 years working on my own business, my own life, and obsessively uh, leaning into people that are experts in this field. And suddenly, about three years ago, I suddenly tipped into an expert too. I spend all day coaching top producers around the country in various industries, and it is really, really fun. I'm obsessed. So. What I wanna say is buckle up, let's get started, let's go, step one. And by the way, I'm gonna back up real quick. I have been backed into a lot of corners in my life. So this relaunch, these 10 steps are how to kind of unback yourself out of a corner. And as adults, the longer we live, we know that this does, this happens. All right, let's start with step one. Step one, this is taking inventory. So. I have, so each of these, the, the template of this is each of these will have key takeaway messages on these PowerPoint slides. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about the, the steps that lead up to those key messages. So when I say take inventory, I mean, who are you? And what do people say about you? And what do you say about yourself? And what are the dominant thoughts in your head? And what do you prefer? What do you like? Who do you love and why? I ask you this because step one is all about using what you already have and leaning into your strengths. It's an inside job. Let's go to step two. So step one is figuring out who you are. Step two, discover your purpose. So we need to trigger thoughts of purpose by answering these questions. What do I enjoy doing? Who do I love? Where can I be of service? And what do I care about? So how do you do this? You start by creating a brief mission statement and write a promise to yourself and keep that mission statement and promise in front of you where you can see it frequently, like your purse or your wallet. And by the way, there's a really great poem written by a, a, a poet from a hundred years ago and his name was Christian D. Larson and it's called The Promise. And I would recommend you Google that and print that off, that is amazing. Write your story and begin to understand what makes you happy and energized. This is so key right now in this virtual world we live in and this digital world. You know, uh, one thing that I just repeat over and over is that you all you have to do is tell your story and your story is unique. And so you've got to admit that you have exciting things that have happened to you in your life. And also interesting things and lessons that others can learn from. So when it comes to discovering your purpose, it also ties into what is your story and the how, the how shows up on your journey to the why. So discovering your purpose is a big piece. Let's go to step three. I love this one, casting the vision. I've been hearing these words, cast the vision for a few years now. Um, I didn't really embrace this until about three years ago. Casting the vision is key. What do you find yourself thinking about when you get lost in time or a daydream? And right now, let's be honest, a lot of us have a lot of time to daydream. Have you ever created a bucket list for those dreams and stretched them? Have you ever created a vision board of things that inspire you and places you want to go and pictures that capture how you want to show up in your own life. So casting the vision has to do with that ideal of you, 
How do you want to show up? How do you feel? What, what does it look like? What kind of car are you driving? Who are the people in your life? So I would recommend that you start really pouring into yourself, reading blogs, books, publications, listen to audiobooks and podcasts. Open your mind to a viewpoint you never held by watching or reading something that scares you, doing something that scares you. And you will see how quickly real stories of common humanity begin to surface and triggering in you different ways of acting and causing you maybe to start to design your life. I want to say that the subconscious mind seeks to fill the orders it's given. So when I talk about casting the vision, I also mean keep it in front of you, you know, in visuals and in words, because this is about feeding the subconscious mind so that it fills the order. Let's go to step four. Step four, develop the goals. This is a very, very fun part for me. I love the developing the goals. Um, I'm reading a lot and fast. So again, thank you for sticking with me. One, let's do this in a step-by-step -step approach. One, get up consistently every morning and do a version of your own miracle morning. In other words, set a few habits every single day that keep you consistent. Identify the biggest issue you have for the day, the big rock, and then I identify the important who that is attached to that and interact with them first. And my, by the way, there might be more than one. Remember, this is also about training them how to treat you. Three, schedule the tasks from that big rock first and remember where they sit on your bench. Are they influencers? Are they key to your life? Are they important referral sources? And if not, you can train them to become that way. Next, number four, I look at my calendar and I decide the rest of my daily tasks, projects, and I put them in order of importance. And this is really key because if you don't have a priority list, everything kind of becomes a priority. And by default, you're just doing what comes next. That is not how a top producer runs their day. They make sure they do things in order of priority because it's an efficient way to do them. And by the way, highly scheduled people actually have more free time. Some people think it might be oppressive, but the truth is the more highly scheduled and time blocked you are, oftentimes the more free time you have. Number five, calendaring for 10 to 14 days out is important because it allows for wiggle room if someone must reschedule an appointment or if you encounter an un unexpected or urgent issue. Uh, one thing that I remember doing one time is asking my son to go to lunch with me when he was in his mid-20s, and he said, uh, why would I know what I'm doing next week? And I couldn't believe it. And I said, are you kidding me? You don't know what you're doing like two weeks from now? And he said, no, why would I know that, mom? And the truth is, I realize that a lot of the people that come to me for coaching, my clients, don't know what they're going to do uh, two weeks out, one week out, even tomorrow. So it is really critical to know where you're supposed to be. It's kind of like if you think about a kid in school, I mean, they have that schedule and the bell rings and they know where they're going. Um, you must run your life like this as well. Number six, rinse and repeat. Never to schedule appointments on a Monday morning or a Friday afternoon. So this is my little invention. I have decided that Monday mornings are rough um, and Friday afternoons can be the ones where I suddenly lose interest, especially in the summer in Minnesota. So, uh, you know, scheduling on a Monday morning, you want to do what you want to do on Monday mornings is prep for your week ahead. And Friday afternoons, you want to celebrate the week behind. All right, let's go to step five, selecting the players. Create a list of people in different areas of your life and ask these questions of them. Do they support my personal life, my physical health, and my sacred relationships, my career goals, my dreams, my vision, and my big why? That is my purpose. So begin to oil the rusty gears by demoting the ones that hurt you or by promoting the ones that treat you well. It will feel a little weird at first and this is a non-negotiable. Make a list of the five to 10 people you spend the most time with and decide if they are supporters and ask yourself, are they inspiring me to be the best version of me or are they just there and I'm just used to it? Then promote and demote accordingly. Slowly wean people out of your life in a kind way when 
I'm sorry, in a kind way, when they ask too much to spend time with you, you just say love to, can't now. So you can do this, guys. I, it is essential to surround yourself with people that believe in you, believe in your dreams, and believe in your daily habits. So find your tribe. It's not that hard. They are where you are. They like what you like. They do what you do. Step six, narrow the focus. Creating a vision board is fun. You can do it alone or in a group. You can do it by clipping pictures out of magazines, or you can do it online, like on Pinterest. You can, you can, uh, words are especially powerful when you use them together with visuals. A gratitude journal is important for writing gratitude and lessons learned, observation, inspiring ideas, quotes, and all things bucket fillers for you. Daydreaming. I know this is going to sound crazy. Many adults never are told to daydream. Daydreaming, you guys, is very key to manifesting the future self and the future life you want to live. Take time each day to imagine how you will feel when you arrive where you want to be. What will you wear? What will you drive? Who will you meet? Who will you be with? What will you talk about? Where are you located? How do you feel about yourself? You must show up as if you are already there and it's already true and already happening. So this is key and why I ask you to journal your thoughts because you can even follow your progress in your own journal as you see the evolution of you happening. And it's, I'm going to be honest, it's quite amazing. So lastly, create a goal, priority, and action plan flow chart for a certain area of your life. You could do any area of your life. You could do your business. You could do your health. You could do finances, um, key relationships. So basically you set a goal and then under that goal, you create three priorities and under each priority, you, you collect um, strategies, five strategies. If you chase two rabbits, you'll neither catch either one. And that's a, Ru a Russian proverb. Okay, step seven, uh, develop powerful habits. You have daily chances and choices to start with. So start with one that barks the loudest. Train your brain to see the good in all things. First, seek to understand why the alarm bells are going off. Come from curiosity, not judgment. Create meaningful spiritual habits of daily gratitude. Create powerful physical habits of great nutrition. Create acceptable physical habits of exercise and meditation. And when I say acceptable, I didn't say great. If you notice, I didn't say great. It's because uh, physical health and exercise are a process. And most people who um, you know, decide to do some kind of exercise, they fall off the wagon real quick. So the idea is, what if you just did something that was acceptable and worked towards a great program? and not start it out with a great program that you fall off and never do again. Create comfortable physical habits of an organized environment. I mean, this is huge. You know, when you know where your things are, when you know where all your documents are, when you know where all your supplies are, it's just a great feeling to know that um, you haven't lost control of your business or your life. Nobody likes to feel disorganized, sloppy, it's not a confidence builder and it, and it can catch you off guard. So spread kindness and grace wherever you go and with ease. And by the way, from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, he says, you can do anything for two minutes. Step eight, deploy activation energy. Learn to live reality-based and not in wishful thinking. Learn to be your own best friend and calm your own mind. Learn the personality types and the psychology of communication. Learn to break through. You will need to create boundaries to break through. And this goes back to the promotion and demotion of people in your life. There's a great book called Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud that I would recommend as well. Learn that by growing a life by design means becoming purposeful in all you do. Learn to awake in gratitude and go to bed each night free of worry and anxiety by doing a brain dump. Learn how to stay in your lane, keep your emotions and ego in check through your own thoughts. Learn how to keep the goal and keep it in front of you through visualization. A picture is worth a thousand words. 
learn to stay open-minded, learning based, and focus on the plan, not the problem. I love that. I'm going to repeat that. Focus on the plan, not the problem. And learn to forgive quickly. And by the way, in parentheses, I always write mostly myself. Uh, willpower, you guys, is not on will call. So start early with your big rocks and your big tasks and your big dreams and motivations. Do not wait until you're on low battery life in the afternoon because we know and our cell phones have the highest charge in the morning. And by the afternoon, we have to recharge them. The second charge on a cell phone is never as strong as the first. Stay focused and eliminate distraction. So step nine, live a gratitude-based life. Perform your own miraculous Monday morning by saying out loud affirmations of gratitude and writing in your gratitude journal. As you can hear, I use the word gratitude almost in every step. So research some great books that are food for the soul and commit to reading at least six a year. That's only one book every eight weeks. And often self-growth books are not super thick or difficult to read, you guys. Learn about someone who inspires you. Find out about their story and how they made it through the weeds and into the sunlight to achieve what you admire about them and then follow what they did, learn from them. Volunteer for a cause that ignites a passion for change. Nothing will create more humility in a person than servitude towards others. And your cause can be people, pets, or the planet. All success and happiness depend on you seeing your life through the lens of abundance. I will repeat, all success and happiness depend on you seeing your life through the lens of abundance. Step 10, launching the new you. Again, I know there's a lot of words here, so I'm glad you stayed with me till the end. Here are some steps to launching the new you. Write down your ideal life five, five years from now and remember the vision board to support the goal. Write down your goals in any area of your life, personal, work, spiritual, and use I am and I will language. Work the plan backwards. Ask what do I need to do to get there and use that 135 action plan. Who are the people you need to include that will help you with your plan? I call them your bench. Time block and don't allow in distractions. Find that place that is yours and yours alone. There are no kids in there. There are no dogs in there. Nobody's taking your highlighters. Find your spot and make it, put up the boundaries and make it yours. List your to-dos in order of priority. Don't bounce around the list and separate work from personal. So when I say don't bounce around the list, I mean people love to check things off. And oftentimes people add things to their list that they already did just to feel the good feeling of checking it off. Don't be tempted to do that. Put them in order of priority, work them in order of priority. And then if you can't complete them, the items you didn't complete on Monday get bounced to the top of the list on Tuesday. Build powerful habits by slowly tweaking the areas of your life that you want to change. Keep your goals in front of you. Look at them each day, several times a day, because paper is fine and so is digital. Use affirmations to foster the belief. Read, listen to inspirational material and stay learning based. Don't break your own rules. Don't over promise and under deliver. Boy, I'll tell you what, I had to learn that the hard way years ago as an entrepreneur that I always over promise and under deliver. It was just, I wanted to, I wanted to deliver. I just couldn't do it. So don't do that. Build a fortress around your time and mental health. Keep the garbage makers out. Negative and destructive people, those who complain a lot, and anyone else that just doesn't get it. And don't forget to reward yourself with laughter and bucket fillers that feed your soul. You're never more than five years away from a brand new and extraordinary life. And that is a quote by Gary Keller. So those are the 10 steps to launching the new you. And I just want to close again by saying, my name is Lisa Z, and I spend eight hours a day, every day, helping people organize their lives. I wasn't always a focus coach. In fact, I believe my desire to be coached was a result of my own lack of focus and organization. I lived most of my life in default and in reaction as opposed to the proactive design and planning. My life's work is to help others succeed in creating a life of purpose that they are excited about and are truly engaged in living. 
So thank you for attending. Thank you, Travis, again, and the team at AGC. Thank you.